it. Wait, wait, John, I got this. We're doing admin panels in Flutterflow today, yeah? Because all you have to do is put an is admin flag on the user's collection. Oh, yeah. If you want to have the shit hacked out of you. If you want to have administrator rights in your Flutterflow application so that your team or your stakeholders or yourself can modify or view sensitive data, you're going to need something more than having like an is admin flag on your users collection. In this video, I'm going to explain a method for creating a super secure admin privilege for specific users in your Flutterflow app and how to distribute this privilege. And using this concept, we'll build an admin area inside of your app. We'll also build an admin portal that's completely separate in another application, so we can cover a wide range of use cases. This tutorial will include references to Firebase and to Subabase because the underlying concept is actually the same, and it empowers you to do some really cool things with Firebase or Subabase, or in a hybrid way to get the best of both. So stick around to the end of the video to see that in action. Okay, first up is Firebase Auth, and we want to wait for a specific user to become an admin and to do so in a way that's totally impossible for a normal user to hack. Firebase Auth works on the principle of JWTs. Whether you have an email password, social logins, or anything else, your user will always be issued with a JWT if you're using Firebase Auth, and that enables authorization. Any calls made to your backend, be it to Firestore, Superbase, or a custom API, or whatever, the JWT will be passed with every call and then decoded on the other end. What's cool about JWTs is that they actually contain a payload with details about the user. These can't be tampered with because the JWT is signed when it's minted. Inside of this payload, you can set a property called a custom claim. And Firebase allows you to add custom claims to any user permanently so that whenever a new token gets minted, this custom claim will be included. And by the way, Firebase JWTs expire after about an hour. And so Flutterflow will refresh the token after this period in the background. The token doing all the work is called the access token. And the token doing the refreshing is called, well, the refresh token. If the custom claim has data added to it, all subsequent access tokens minted will contain the custom claim. Okay, now since the custom claim is so secure, we can now add the is admin claim. And the common convention actually is to use the key value pair role admin. At this point, you might realize that you could set the custom claim as anything. It could be super admin or manager or executive in charge of ice cream. This is called role-based access control. But remember that if you implement ORBAC in this way, the user will need to wait an hour or log out and log in again. So you might need to find a balance between this high security approach, like you need for admins, and user experience. OK, so how do we create the first admin? You need to code this, because it can only be done in a super secure environment, one that by its nature has to make use of the service account credentials from your Firebase project. This is a simplified version of the script I use in Python to set custom claims. And it's important to note that you can do the same thing in any language that supports the Firebase SDK. So from the Firebase SDK, I import the auth module. Then I import the credentials handler. I specify which user ID I want to make an admin. I initialize Firebase using the credentials, which in this case I'm loading from an environment file. And then I set the claim. Okay, now we set the authorization rules. In Firebase, you would use Firestore rules to protect whatever data you want and only for specific actions. If I, as an admin, for example, want to upload recipes for my cooking app, I also want to feel sure that my users can't modify or delete the recipes. But I also need to be sure that all of my users can see all of my recipes. By the way, if you're finding the content helpful, please be sure to subscribe and do check out the link in the description to learn a bit more about me if you want to work directly with me or if you just want to get your hands on the code and the implementation for these admin panels. Now, let's say you're using Supabase. One thing that I like to do is stick with Firebase Auth and actually validate my tokens on my own backend. So in Python, I decode and verify the token as it's being sent from my Flutterflow app. And then I mint my own Supabase token. This is the feature that will be available directly in Supabase quite soon, by the way. Supabase JWTs are similar, but not the same. Here I can actually just mint this role called admin. And in this case, the PostgreSQL database will evaluate this PostgreSQS role. And now I can set up role level security using this role. Then I have to create a check that the role field is admin. And then we have a bulletproof admin or LS policy. Do not try to do this stuff in Flutterflow. 
That's because Flutterflow's job is really just to build the app bundle and the web JavaScript files. It's like a dumb front end, and any code that you include should be thought of as publicly accessible. And actually, for this reason, I can build out an entire admin area in my mobile app. In this case, I hid it behind a long press of a logo here. And I'm sure anyone can just stumble on this by accident, but that does not give them admin access. So you can include a friendly message and tell them, hey, do what you want. You're not authorized to be here. It's the difference between hiding a secret door and asking people not to open it if they find it versus locking the secret door with a deadbolt. But maybe you want a whole other separate web app just for admins. Here I've created an app with a traditional JavaScript framework called Vue.js, though you could just as easily do this in Flutterflow as well if you wanted to. The reason I did it in Vue is because it is just a dumb front end. So I was able to attach it to my API and host it all together on the same server but I can use the same Firebase credentials and my role admin custom claim will authenticate me just the same. And now I can manage the app, send notifications or emails, update things like the privacy policy on the fly. I can receive contact form submissions sent from the mobile app. I can even use it as a full content management system. Pretty cool, no? And by the way, if you'd like to learn more about this Superbase Firebase setup together, check out this video next. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.